Hello and welcome back to the Raid Room, another video where I'm basically going to empty my brain on your face. Uh, now today we want to talk about how the hell did you, Green, do so well so fast in the world of NAS? This is something I have talked about in small details in different videos, but I've never made one big video on it. Because, frankly, I didn't know who would want to listen, but more importantly, this is such an interesting subject that I think other brands, not just NAS, but other brands in the world of tech could really stand to emulate and copy how Ugreen did so well in just one year. Now, we have to acknowledge Ugreen existed long before their NAS came out. They started getting into NAS in 2020, 2021, it's 2025 right now, and even prior to that, they're well known for adapters, they're well known for cables, they're well known for, of course, their power devices. They are a brand with a reputation, so it would be naive to at least acknowledge that that played its part in quite a big way. However, how Ugreen covered so much of the internet simply came down to the way they allocated their budget. It sounds really boring, right? Really spreadsheet in Excel, but that's really it. Now, I'm coming about this subject as a YouTube person, as a person who writes articles, who's someone who has worked in uh, data storage at the e-retail level and then support. I'm coming at this with quite a lot of years of watching a lot of these brands develop. And again, we're gonna use QNAP and Synology as examples, but we're also gonna use Seagate and WD as well. So there's a lot of inside baseball. Most brands, when they are launching a new product or a new range or anything from hard drives to SSDs to frigging USB sticks, more often than not, they will approach smaller platforms. And again, these are known as micro influencers. Uh, and, and these influencers, they then reach out to them. And again, that can go all the way up to storage review. The word influencer has only been around for the last few years, but the actual concept has been around for decades. They will contact them and offer them a sample, generally on a loan, or they'll offer a sample and then facilitate it with a bit of bunts on top, a bit of sponsorship. That's happened before. We generally here at the channel rarely engage in sponsorship. We do maybe one sponsored video every couple of weeks, maybe once a month. We don't really do sponsored videos that much. However, when we are contacted by brands, we receive the goods, like a brand will send us some hardware, we will then review it, and then more often than not, it goes back. Sometimes it doesn't, we talk to them, and then we say, look, we would like to make some comparisons, now it's compares name on the channel, but ultimately, a unit gets sent to us, and maybe it will sit here in the test area, or it will be used in comparisons, or it will be used in testing for other testing of hardware and equipment. But more often than not, very, very few hardware units go out. And a big reason for that is to do with larger review sites, well-established review sites, influencers, call you what you will. Now, a lot of these platforms demand um, sponsorship. They demand the device be sent to them with hard drives and SSDs inside. They demand the device to be sent to them in a certain way. They demand it sent to them, again, with sponsorship, maybe with uh, marketing and stuff around it and their marketing budgets um, sent around them. Again, uh, and what's known as an MDF, Marketing Development Fund, is allocated to a product, and that could be from uh, location to location, or it can be uh, distributed globally by the brand themselves. So when a product comes out, a lot of research and development will be conducted, and at the end they go, this is how much we've got for the budget, and then because bigger, louder platforms have a larger demand, they generally end up charging more. And again, by larger platforms, I'm talking about the ones with millions of uh, followers there. Now, this brings us right the way back to Ugreen. What they did right is at the beginning, during the Kickstarter, and I believe even up to this point, they didn't pay any sponsorship. Everyone I spoke to, from small platform to medium platform, by medium, I'm talking about the 100K followers, and again, that can be uh, uh, TikTok, it can be YouTube, it can be any platforms. Call it 100K as the middle. Anything below that, generally anything above 10,000 uh, they were looking at, they just sent the equipment. They just sent the equipment. They didn't try to pay any MDS. They didn't even engage in any of that kind of stuff from everyone I've spoken to. They just got the equipment and sent it to everyone. They sent it, the, some of their equipment to some of the smallest platforms 
for a brand of its reputation, I've ever seen. I saw um, you green reviews going out to some channels that had a few hundred subscribers. Now, that was clearly you green going, this is how much we've got for our marketing development, how much does that cost in raw materials at cost, and then they just sent units all over the world. They went bananas. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's obvious. What about if people do bad reviews, though? What if people get the stuff and don't make the videos? And you're right. Maybe they wouldn't, or maybe some people just kept it and took the, you know, took the hardware and ran. But the point is, when you Green came round to doing their crowdfunding, this groundswell of reputation, this groundswell of reviews all happened at vaguely the same time. But it was more than that. Because when that happened, smaller platforms, again, your platforms with, let's say, between 1,000 and 10,000 followers, those platforms made multiple videos. Not only that, they integrated this hardware into their workflow because they are small platforms. They are platforms where budgets are small, the margins are small, they're just starting out. And then suddenly, they've just been sent a NAS solution just been sent to them. Some of them got sent with drives as well, from what I understand. The people received units, and then they've integrated it into their workflow, and then made more videos on it. It got featured in other videos, and this groundswell got louder and louder. And remember, no money has changed hands from the brand at this point. Now, again, some of those reviews were negative. Some of those reviews, like my early ones, were, this is a great product in terms of hardware, but software, it is way, way, way behind everyone. Now, some other brands I've worked with will send you hardware on the agreement that you send a draft of the video in advance. And a lot of the brands that I talk about do that. Now, I agree to those terms, but only if they agree that they can only review the draft for factual, factual inaccuracies. They're not allowed to change anything opinion-based. They're not allowed to change any of that. So I will send it to them and they'll go, huh, Oh, you got that wrong about a CPU. You got that wrong about a lane distribution. You got that wrong about a policy. And then I will look at that. I will see if I was wrong. And then I will make that change. That's editorially fine as far as I'm concerned. They don't contact me and then go, oh, are things hard? The, the, your speed test makes our device look poor speed. Please remove that. No, get lost. It's getting published. Now, Ugreen, on the other hand, when I send them the draft, because they did ask for a draft, they just went, and some of my early stuff was pretty negative in terms of their software, in terms of their security management there, in terms of the applications and services, the globalization, the language. Lots of that was just wrong, wrong, wrong. It was bad, bad, bad. And they didn't bat an eye. And it made me go back to other people's videos. And some people were horrific about this. And then how did I find those videos? They were being shared on Ugreen's own social media platform because they saw that it was about the general groundswell over time. <clears throat> now, last thing, and the other reason that they went for those smaller platforms is about the intimacy. Now, Linus Tech Tips is a great example. Linus Tech Tips channel is good. I like it. I always have liked it. You can be wherever you want to be on the Gamers Nexus Lewis Rossman LTT argument of all of the things that have happened on different subjects and more. But I think we all have to at least acknowledge that the relationship between you, the viewer, and the presenter gets even more diluted the bigger a platform becomes. It's inevitable. It's nothing to do with a failing on anyone's part. It is just sheer numbers of scale. If someone makes a video that has a million views in just a matter of days, it is impossible to have a person-to-person -person relationship with the viewer or even comment and answer everything. You need to have team members, you have management, people get in the middle. And it's just, it's the facts of life. It's the facts of production. Now, smaller platforms have that intimate relationship. Smaller platforms respond to more comments, they're responding more earnest, and then they end up having that one-to-one -one relationship. So that means you, the viewer, have a greater deal of trust in the reviewer or the presenter in any shape or form when they talk about a product thanks to that more personal relationship. And you Green, either by a marketing agency or people that recommended it to them, understood that. And that's the other reason that this approach worked so well. Because so many people, if you go onto Reddit, if you go onto uh, Facebook and other community forums, or even Ugreen's own forums, or even when you go to Synology's own forums, if you go to QNAP's own forums, you go to Acer's store forum, you go to all of those places, there are lots of people talking very well about Ugreen systems. And frankly, 
let's still be realistic. On a software level, they're still quite far behind everyone else. But people are giving them that leeway thanks to that marketing approach and that groundswell at the beginning. It's kind of why right now during the uh, Synology hardware, hard drive compatibility, they are doing so well. Because that groundswell over the course of a year of positivity is completely smothering the absolute tsunami of negativity towards Synology and this change of their hard drive policy there. Now, when it comes to this approach, I will say we also have to be realistic that you, Green, right now are riding a groundswell wave of positivity, but they have still yet to have a full-on bad day. They've not had a widespread security vulnerability issue. They've not had a backdoor issue identified yet in Linux command or even something like a hard code credential or a weak certificate. They've not had any of that happen yet. It would be very easy to say, well, they're clearly doing well. They've not had any security incidents yet. Realistically, though, it's just not true because everyone, including Synology, security vulnerabilities exist either within those that are found within Linux itself or ones that are in the first party applications and services. Extreme examples like QNAP, light examples like Synology and Sino uh, Locker, they exist. And chances are, those that, you know, that look to hack these systems, these bad actors, if they're not already trying to crack these systems and crack that software and find vulnerabilities, it wouldn't surprise me if right now the only reason they're not doing or if they found a vulnerability is they're just waiting till there's enough devices in the field where a ransomware attack could be most profitable in terms of people paying Bitcoin in order to get an, an, an uh, decryption key there. So as, you know, as positive as this video may have been about Ugreen, we also have to keep our feet on the ground and remember they have yet to be tested right now in the broad network attached storage market versus everyone else. And until that day happens, that is an enormous gap in my recommendations about this brand because they've still yet to prove not only about whether there would be a security. And again, I do think there's going to be a vulnerability found. It would be you know, madness and naive to think otherwise, but also how they handle it. Because if you look at QNAP and Deadbolt, QNAP and Deadbolt, people were pissed about that vulnerability in QLocker and uh, QSnatch and stuff like that. My God, QNAP. But at the same time, people were just as annoyed about the way the brand handled it. The 30-day disclosure, how they handled um, forced system updates for users that made systems reboot how quick they were to respond to users. Ultimately, it was about the way it was handled, not just the event itself. And until we see how Ugreen handle it, right now, that groundswell of positivity, I don't think is enough if they don't handle a security incident well enough. But this has been, how exactly did Ugreen do as well as they did, as quick as they did? Other brands who don't have such a big reputation in advance probably won't do as well or have the luxury of being able to send out so much hardware to a bunch of people. But I do think there are some things to be learned in this with regards to how a brand promotes and distributes its product early doors. But thank you so much for watching. Thanks for joining me in the raid room and I'll see you next time.